Part two. Justification. Introduction, a father's lament. That spring day the future was born, then we kissed again. That spring day the future was born, then we kissed again. The future was born, then we kissed again. Then we kissed again. Look, Frank says excitedly. Can you see? I can't see anything, replies Rebecca. Then adds, yet. Tom smiles. He recognises her desire to please. Let's go closer. The terrain is becoming wonderfully familiar to him. It's as if he's never left. Even the ground level flick of an ear in the distance was like an inbuilt trigger. He'd known what it was straight away and he'd not been here for 20, 30 years. Daddy! Kangaroos! <laughs> shouts his daughter as the two wallabies rise and swing lazily through the hot air away from the approaching couple. Rebecca's six-year-old eyes glint with excitement as she lets go of Tom's hand and runs after them, squealing. She chases them for longer than he expects, running as fast as she can until finally she stops and bends over, panting. <laughs> Tom grins to himself. He's pleased she's so excited. It's what he's wanted to introduce her to the untainted, natural excitement of his own childhood. <laughs> she starts screaming. What? He calls and strides faster. Oh, surely not a snake, he hopes. Maybe a lizard, a frilled neck or something. The scream raises in pitch and Rebecca starts slapping at a little bare legs and jumping up and down. Tom sprints. She stood in the middle of a large bull ant's nest. It covers at least two square meters. The soldier ants are swarming all over her legs. More are pouring out of the ground as she drums them up. There are welts already appearing around multiple stings. Her face registers surprise, rage and panic as Tom hoists her off the nest and starts swiping the ants off. They cling tenaciously. Pincers lodged into flesh and abdomens pumping an attack. Rebecca <laughs> screams in his ear a long <laughs> continuous shriek. <laughs> that finally trails off. It takes a full minute to check her body and clear the rest of her legs. She's tense in his arms, trembling, and Tom hugs her tight. It's all right now. We'll go back. I'll carry you. He waits for a minute, then checks. She stopped breathing. Back, back, he shouts. Suddenly aware that there is no point in shouting. Well, she's physically as close as she can be. It's her conscious state that's out of reach. A bizarre set of connections flashes across his mind. The times he wanted to hit up the raised volume of drunks. Aggressive playmates from his school days. Distractions crowding out the immediacy of the moment. Tom shakes his head violently in frustration. Rebecca wheezes with the motion. Her eyelids are swelling up and the welts on her legs ugly and growing. Tom stands frozen, unsure what to do. Anaphylactic shock. That's what it is. What do you do to treat? Anaphylactic shot! Mobile phone is in the car. He can't use it anyway. It's out of range here. He pats her on the back, he murmurs to her, asks her to wake up, but she's well beyond that. All he can see of her eyes is the white. Zulu! He thinks time to shoot! Then is overcome with a momentary feeling of anger! She spoilt the day, the weekend. This was their bonding time. This was his childhood. God damn it, she's ripped! He wants to hit her! Pet! He yells. The torso loses tension. She judders in his arms. Her face is turning blue. Tom kicks away the scrub and stones, rips off his shirt, lays it on the ground, and stretches his daughter out on her back. A perverse thought makes him check to make sure no one is around to see. The last thing he needs now is for this to be misunderstood. His body ejects a sharp bark of a laugh. <laughs> if only there were someone else here. He learned CPR in school, but school was a long time ago. Check them out for obstructions, he thinks, and prizes open Rebecca's jaw. There's something thick and spongy filling the space. It takes him a second to realise it's her tongue, swollen out of shape. Ah, he whispers. He puts his finger in there and tries to depress the tongue, but it forms itself around his digit like a water-filled balloon. Oh, Beck, 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 he whimpers as he feels for her pulse, fumbling at her wrist, then her neck. It's there, faint. But he has saved her. She goes into spasm. Oh, Tom screams! 
This is not what I want! He wants to be a child again, wandering alone in a personal landscape with no life or death responsibility. Surely this was beyond love. Beyond parenting. Not his fault! Beyond his fixing, he briefly considers running away, but instead tries to hold her oh. limbs and head down as they arch and buck out of control. He suddenly remembers one day of many days watching a, a blue-tongued lizard trapped in an empty <laughs> tin, scrabbling helplessly around, trying to find an exit as teenage boys shoot at it with a slug gun. He felt impotent then, but sided with the boys, shooting at the lizard's head, hoping it would die. It did it, and it lives on now, scrabbling in his memory. There's a pair of sharp pointed nail scissors on his king ring. Tom kneels on his daughter's shoulders, holds her head still, and gouges at the clavicle of her neck until he hears an intake of air. <gasps> Blood oozes onto the ground, and he realizes the dust isn't red, it's orange. His memory and his perception have been disproved by the vividness of Rebecca's blood. He picks her up and runs. It takes half an hour to reach the car and another half to speed to the hospital. The police arrive ten minutes after that and take him away for questioning.